In this video I'm going to be installing this Victron BMV700 battery monitor along with this optional Bluetooth dongle so that we can uh, connect to this via our smartphone. Now I had originally thought about using these inexpensive made in China monitors which consist of a shunt and the display unit but this one's going to do much more because this is more accurate in the amp hour reading and conveniently on the back here there's kind of a diagram of how this thing goes together basically the battery on the negative side you put the shunt and then that goes to your circuit so the shunt allows you to measure current and then the monitor is connected to the shunt as well now they have an upgraded version, it's called the BMV702, which I did not buy. And that allows you to monitor more than one battery. Plus it has a temperature probe that you can monitor the temperature of the battery as well. But with this RV, I didn't think I needed to go to that extent. And the contents of the Victron battery monitor are the battery monitor itself. And this is a 2 inch diameter, so 2 and 1 16th inch diameter hole, or enlarge the 2 inch hole if that's all you have. You also have an optional square bezel that goes over this and a shunt with connector for the power cable. This goes on the negative side of the battery and this red cable goes from the connector here to the positive side of the battery and this is only used to send power to this puck. And then you've got just a six wire cable to go from here to the back side here. And there's also a connector on the back side of this for the Bluetooth connector, which is what I have here. And you'll have to get yourself a short piece of 4 gauge cable. And this is an 18 inch, you can get them already pre made. And this, by the way, is a 3 inch diameter as well as is this. And you may find battery itself maybe a 5 16th. So you may actually want to snip one end off if you've got the tools to do it and replace this with a 5 16 So we'll see when we start installing this whether we have to do that or not. And the quick start guide as well as the manual. And here's an old telephone man trick that I'll show you. I got a piece of paracord and you can use any kind of nylon. And the length of this is twice the length of the blind area that I got to pull the fish tape through. And then in the center, I just put a loop in it, and then I just put a lug on each end. And when you pull the fish tape through, pull this through first, and then secure each end with a lug. And you always have this cord in the spot that you got to run wire. And since it's double the length, you can start at one end and tie your cord that you want to pull through the void on here and then pull it all the way through to the other end and vice versa you can go either direction that's why you make it twice as long so since we're going in there with a the fish tape and it's not all that easy to fish through we're going to install this and then if I have any future cables that I got to run I already have a messenger wire or whatever you want to call it already installed so I've done this quite often in boats and previous RVs and it sure is a time saver and you can see here we've got our pull cord tied off and it runs out here and ultimately we have it tied it off to our fish tape so when we pull the fish tape through we're also going to pull this cable through and then that will be our permanent pull cable and I actually have two wires here that I'm going to try to pull them through together and so it's just a matter of taping both wires and you can see I've staggered them so that makes a smaller cross section and as you can see here here's the other end and we'll call up our pull cord and we'll just toss it in there and leave it for the next time we need it. As luck would have it, these connectors are for a 3 8 inch diameter stud, which is what is on the shunt, but the battery is 5 16 So I have to replace one end with a 5 16 terminal. Now there's only one way to do this and to do it right, and I have this 16 ton press. These are metric, and so you have to interpolate between 4 gauge and what the metric equivalent is. And you also need a good set of cutters to do this right. And I just go as far as I can. Here we go, that ain't too bad, it's on there. I've got the negative post from the battery going up to 
that side of the shunt, the only thing there. Then across the shunt, we've got the original negative of the battery going back to the system ground. And also the negative for my other circuits. And then there's a positive wire that actually powers the meter that goes down to the positive side of the battery. I probably could have put it in there, and it probably wouldn't have made a difference, but this is a god-awful mess anyway, so I'm going to have to one of these days go through the wiring. And then finally we've got the sensor cable, and I'm going to leave that unplugged. It plugs in right up there. I'm going to leave that unplugged to the last step. Unfortunately, I did not have to change the battery connector that was originally on the battery, because even though this is a 5 16 post, that was a 3 8 inch ring. So <laughs> they used the wrong one to begin with. And with the wire, we ran through the bulkhead here, and that's a leftover clam, is what it's called, from some of my boating supplies when I used to have a boat. And then they just go up across, and then into the back side of the console. And so I'm thinking about the only spot I have for the monitor is about right here. So we're going to drill a 2 inch hole in there. And we have the hole cut, and I'll tell you, it says 2 and 16th, and it has to be 2 and 16th. I used a 2 inch hole saw, which is the only thing I had, and then I used a rotary rasp in my drill, and then just enlarged it to a 2 and 1 16th. So the first thing that happens when we plug it in is it's asking for the battery capacity, and you may have to go online to find that. I found that for my particular battery, we're at 90 amp hours at a 20 hour rate. There we are, we're at 90 amp hours. And that's all you have to do. Uh, once you get the 90 amp hours in, this is the main screen, it shows 13.36 volts, uh, 7.6 amps. I just turned the converter on, so now it's actually going through a real quick charge. And you can see from my little battery charger monitor, the converter is in charge mode. 77 watts, uh, 1 tenth of an amp hour, Battery is 99.9% .9 charged. Pretty cool. I just think it's going to work out really great. Now I have the Bluetooth plugged in. We're going to pair it. So when we fire up the app that found it, it says we'd have to do an update. Okay, so let's continue. It shows that it sees the BMV 700, and the default pairing is six zeros. And by the way, you can change the code, and they recommend you do that. There you go, I got it to read an amp discharge because I had to turn the converter off. And remember, the converter actually supplies power. Then when I extended and retracted the awning, it gave me the 3.3 .3 amp load. And minus means discharge, of course. And this gives you some uh, history. We got the deepest discharge, last discharge, average discharge, cumulative amp hour, discharge energy, and charge generating kilowatts. Charge, total tight cycles, total charge cycles, last time since full charge, synchronization, number of full discharges. I'm going to have to look at the manual, and a lot of stuff will happen after this thing has been running for a while. This can stay on all the time, because this thing runs at about 4 milliampers. That's nothing. The self-discharge rate of the battery is going to be more than that. So you can leave this on all the time without having to worry about turning it off. In fact, there's not even an on-off switch for it. They want you to leave it on, because then it's always recording and maintaining. And this app looks like it's got a lot in it. You look at here, we got battery capacity, and you can, I think you can change all these. There's some of them. Yeah, that one you can change. Charged voltage. You can change that, so if your converter has a different charge voltage and charge detection time per code exponent, that's kind of cool. And I've actually went to the battery manufacturer and I'm trying to find out what the per code coefficient is. And if they ever send it to me, I'll do another video and really explain what perk wood is, because it's kind of fascinating. Relay, and it has alarm relay. You can invert the relay, so I'm going to guess that you can either have open contacts or closed contacts. Minimum close time, relay off delay, low state of charge relay, low voltage relay, high voltage relay. And then in alarms, we've got low state of charge alarm, uh, buzzers on. Low voltage and high voltage alarms are off. Display, we've got backlight intensity, backlight always on. Uh, scroll speed, main voltage display, current display, power display, consumed amp power display, state of charge display, and time to go display. So yeah, I'm very impressed with this. 